Um, my name is Michelle Hanlon. I'm a space lawyer. I think one of the coolest and badass nerd titles there could be is space lawyer. And I had the privilege of interviewing a space lawyer a week ago. We talked about a lot of things, including a video that I put out about space junk, space debris, the threat of things not only falling from the sky here on Earth, but also polluting low Earth orbit and putting us at greater risk for something called Kessler syndrome. But I wanted to make this portion of the conversation about an unprecedented lawsuit that I told you about last month, but Michelle Hanlon has more details about. This basically boils down to a family in Florida who had a piece of ISS junk land on top of their house with someone inside the house, and now they are making a claim against NASA. NASA has up to six months to respond, but the case is so interesting and also unprecedented. I wanted to give some more context. And talk about, you did, a, I believe, a panel recently about the lawsuit from Florida, this family who had a piece of the ISS space junk land on their home and it's sort of like an unprecedented legal case. Um, what do you think about, you know, obviously you're concerned about the low earth orbit ban, but you're also concerned about stuff dropping here on earth. Absolutely. And this is one of the biggest concerns with respect to these new satellite constellations, because the whole point of them is resiliency, right? They're not intended to stay up there for, for centuries. Um, they are intended to be up there, do their job, and then be deorbited so somebody something can replace it, so that there's this constant connectivity. So when we think about deorbiting, um, that is really the way we take care of space junk right now, right? Um, uh, the um, debris mitigation guidelines um, that are that were put forward by the international community through the UN Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space says within 25 years of the end of life, you have to deorbit. You have to make sure um, it comes back to Earth and presumably burn up in the atmosphere. And so that was what it was intended. That's what in is intended to happen with um, these constellations. And that was what was intended to happen on this piece that fell onto this unfortunate home in Florida. It's really it's an interesting story from a legal standpoint, and I don't I don't want your listeners to get really bored with me. But it was a, a piece of battery that was on station that um, that either malfunctioned or didn't work properly, and so they sort of put it in a corner, right? And if you have a big house and you throw something in the corner, you don't really worry about it. You don't really think about it until you move. The station's not a big house, and it was starting to get in the way. And so somebody at NASA said, "Okay, um, we'll we'll just eject it. Usually, uh, usually they will send debris back to Earth um, on the on the uh, with the." cargo capsules and so forth. But here they said, okay, it's in the way, we'll just jettison it. And this is, this decision was made three years ago. And um, we, we did some sort of risk assessment and decided that it will burn up completely in the atmosphere, no issue to anybody, right? Um, and of course, three years go by, it enters the atmosphere and it doesn't burn up and it falls through um, this house and comes, you know, it, it's not like it was inches from a person, but I think the very fact that there was a person in the house uh, is a little too close for comfort, right? Yeah. Um, and and so, you know, imagine a piece of junk um, from space falling on your house, you know, and, and you see it and and the 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 fear um, and the angst it must cost. You know, uh, last time something like this fell to Earth, it was a nuclear uh, powered Russian satellite um, and it was radioactive. And so if you got too close, you would get radiation sickness. Was that what happened? I mean, there was just no knowledge. So this poor homeowner went and did his research and figured it out, contacted NASA. NASA said, oh, oops. Yeah, that was ours. Um, and now the, the, the family has filed a, uh, a Federal Tort Claims Act, it's called. They, they're suing the federal government for the damages they received. Before you get really bored of the law, um, generally, you cannot sue your your sovereign government, um, except that we have this this form within the United States where we can, and we have to you have to prove negligence. You have to prove that the person, you know, that the government made a bad decision um, when it decided to jettison that battery pack from station. Right. The really really interesting part about this, Ellie, is that um, if that battery had fallen in Mexico or Japan, or Cuba, 
Canada, you don't have to prove negligence. Under international law, if something falls from space or on the way to space and hits you, they, there's absolute liability, no negligence. So we have this really interesting dichotomy discovered now in, with respect to international law and domestic US law, where internationally, you don't have to prove there was negligence, but domestically, you do. That's so weird. And this is not boring at all. I covered this and people expressed a lot of interest in it. The article that I read seemed to say that they weren't actually in a lawsuit yet. It was a claim. So is it technically a lawsuit or not? It is technically not a lawsuit. And that's a really good distinction to make. So when you file under the Federal Tort Claims Act, um, you file a claim with the agency that you think did something wrong. And then that agency has nine months to decide whether it's just going to settle with you or whether it's going to say, no, um, we're, it's not our fault. So if you want, you have to take us to court. So we're not at the lawsuit level yet. They have to get a statement from NASA that says either, hey, we're going to settle. So sorry. Or, hey, there was no negligence. We're not going to settle. If you want to be um, compensated, you have to take us to court. Well, my understanding is they're only asking for like $50,000 or something, right? It's like totally reasonable. NASA got so lucky with this one. I mean, honestly, think about it. Um, you know, this is a piece of the space station. From, from a standpoint, you know, one of my, my you know, hobbies, passions is space heritage, right? Um, there are people who would pay millions of dollars for a piece of space station that fell out of the sky. This homeowner could have just put this up for auction on eBay and made millions of dollars, right? And this person did not. This person is responsible. This person, you know, uh, understands how important this is. This is this is going to be sort of precedent setting, right? You know, because not because everybody has to run out and be worried that they're going to get hit by space junk, but because more and more space junk is going to fall. Um, and so I think, you know, at, at some level, um, NASA is, has got to be sort of so thankful to this homeowner and, and his very responsible attorney. But that said, it's very hard to think about, and, and the lawyers at NASA have to think about, okay, what precedent are we setting? So this homeowner is reasonable, they just want $40,000, right? But if we um, accept the claim, does that mean that the next person who gets hit is gonna think, oh, automatically I should get whatever? Lawyers are um, trained to think about the impacts of things 10, 15, 50 years down the line. So what is the impact of the decision that NASA makes today? And, and that is, well, you know, we know more stuff is coming down. Does NASA want to create an environment of automatic liability, um, which would bring it in line with international law, or does it need to be a little bit more protective? And then remember, you know, when we talk about NASA money, when we talk about compensating this, this homeowner, that's your money, that's taxpayer money. Um, and so it's, it's an interesting um, sort of uh, consideration in terms of how this is going to play out. It would seem to me that they should compensate the family. Do you have any thoughts on that? And also nine months to decide? That's a long time. So this is the federal government at work, right? I mean, we've all been there. <laughs> how, long, how long does it take to get a new driver's license? I'd love, I'd let me step back and just say in Mississippi, it does not take long to get a new driver's license. I love the DMV here in Mississippi. That that's the amount of time it goes through all of you know the considerations and so forth. That's the time that the the government would take longer if it weren't federally mandated that they have to have a response in nine months. You know what is NASA going to do? I it's again it's it's such an interesting question. Um, yes, I think NASA should pay. Um, what I don't know is what was the process. You know, was there actual negligence? What was the process in the decision? to to jettison this battery at, at what point what was the risk assessment that was done um and if you you talk to um, you said you had jonathan mcdowell on the show you talk to people like jonathan and they will say you know when that decision was made i was skeptical that this would burn up completely in the atmosphere so if there were you know i mean of course that's what the monday monday morning quarterbacking you know of course in retrospect yes i thought it would but um what was what was the decision process at that time? I, I do think that 
NASA is a very responsible organ agency. I do think that the United States does a very good job of licensing and supervising its space actors. And so I don't think that there's a lot of harm in NASA saying, okay, we'll pay, because I don't see this happening over and over and over again. And honestly, if it does happen again, you want that homeowner to, um, to go and give the piece back to NASA. You don't want them putting it on eBay for sale. So as I mentioned, NASA will have six months to respond to this claim. But in the meantime, the attorney for this family has further engaged in the conversation with several other space law experts in the space community, especially considering recent news events with additional space debris landing in North Carolina. So I will keep up to date on this story. And in the next video, the final video of this series with Michelle Hanlon, we will talk about her biggest concerns over the next few years when it comes to space junk and space debris. I really found our conversation very interesting. I hope that you did too. And if you liked it, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Ellie in Space so you don't miss any future videos.